Hi everyone and uh, welcome to another 3D printer upgrade video. In this one uh, we're going to be dealing with something that's bugged me for a while which is the spool holder you can see on the 3D printer on the top right there which is just two pressed steel arms with a piece of uh, threaded bolt with some nuts uh, to hold that in place and whilst it kind of does a job it's not exactly uh, smooth running and also if you've got embossed kind of spokes on the sides of your spools uh, where you might have you know like a window so you can see how much filament you've got left on the spool that's actually got an annoying habit of, of getting hung up on those arms when the uh, 3d printing head kind of pulls the spool diagonally on the uh, threaded rod because that threaded rod's obviously tiny and the spool uh, core tends to be very big so we're going to do something about that so we're going to head over to fusion 360 now and design a replacement okay so here we are in fusion 360 and i won't run through the whole tutorial on how i built the design of this but we'll just show the components uh, so started out actually by building the arms and you can see these right angle bracket pieces here that's uh, for bolting the arms onto the aluminium extrusion of the 3D printer so all I did was uh, designed one used uh, a sketch actually in this plane over here on the right and kind of extruded out to the left and then once I was happy with that shape uh, then did a mirror of that body to create the left hand side now just spin that round critical piece in this is to make sure that this little u-shaped piece actually will give a little bit of clearance when the bearing is sat into this holder piece on the top here so that these axles can spin freely on the bearing there uh, and on the other side as well so that's that piece done and let me just turn the spool off and if we look at the left hand axle you can see that the axle is actually built in two pieces so there's this long piece here and there's a recess you can see in the back of this cone on the left hand side uh, what I'll do actually is probably make a flange or put a collar clamp around here and then a spring will fit inside there so that you can pull this spool back but more importantly when the spool is on top of it like this that spring will push this cone in towards this one and hold the spool uh, on the cone shapes itself uh, which means that the actual core if you like of the spools can be different sizes uh, and in different places and this will kind of clamp it in place on the axle which is going to be very useful so let me just turn that off again so we've got our left axle there the right axle will be rigid uh, if you like and halfway through this cone on the right hand side I'll probably put another flange or collar clamp on here just to hold it in place and then the left hand axle will actually recess if you like into that right hand cone which makes the whole shape then so that's pretty much it so we've got some 3d printing to do so we've got to do 3d printing of these cones now i was going to use tpu or ninja flex synthetic rubber and print those but a bit of a pain on my machine at the moment especially as i don't have the spool holder <laughs> because it's very temperamental um prone to not printing if it gets held up or snagged for any reason uh, so i just print these out of pla and the same with the arms would just be pla as well and we'll step over to the 3D printer. You can watch those printing with a bit of music and then we'll step over to the lathe and get these axles done as well.
Okay, there's the 3D printing out of the way. Let's get on with the lathe work. So we've got to make the long axle to start with. And first operation is just to face off any roughness off the end of the 20 mm uh, aluminium rod that I've got. Then I will take a bit of the crud off the outside of that rod and also mark down to the length that we want, which I think was about 40 mil if I remember rightly. And that's going to go down to a 5 mil kind of flange. And then what we do is we start roughing out, taking uh, more aggressive cuts. And then we go into finer cuts when we get down to the right diameter, which is 10 mil. And just measure that. And also just check with the bearing on there as well, just to make sure we got a fit. Then we go into the uh, parting tool, which will chop that off. And turning that round in the lathe, we then face off the other end. And then essentially turn this end down to the 10 mil as well. But this time I did it in two operations so that I didn't get too much deflection at the far right of the rod, as you can see it there. In fact, you might just be able to see the join where the two uh, operations were yeah there it is just in the middle there look and then we take it off and that's the first of the axles with a flange on it and then a quick demonstration of what it's going to look like when it's assembled and then we get on with the shorter ones uh, essentially the same thing we're going to face off and start roughing down to the 10 mil diameter we need for the other bearing on the other side a bit of uh, chamfering as well on the end and then parting off again and then face the other side. Back from the lathe and we've got our assemblies here. So that was the longer of the two rods uh, with this flange. I could have used a collar clamp on there but uh, as I got the lathe may as well make a neat job of it. There's a small spring there which I just had lying around and you can see the recess in that cone. So that goes through there and that lets us push that back. Um, I've just press fit this bearing on the back so it spins and the other side is pretty much the same but without the springs. This one's static, uh, again bearing. Could have used a collar clamp again just to hold that tight and you'll see that that shaft doesn't come all the way through the cone so basically what we can do is we can get our spool and clamp them together so we just put two halves in Let's see if we can see that should be able to hopefully and then that will sit into the two arms on the 3D printer and the spring will just lightly tension the cone together and these won't be able to move back out further than a, um, a small amount because of the way that they sit into the arms. So let's just get these over to the 3D printer and then we can um, get printing again with a far smoother running spool holder. Right, I've already got a spool of material loaded into the 3D printer uh, but uh, and again this one's slightly different it's got a recessed uh, spool core if you like so we put one side in there put the other side on so here we are, we've got this spool on now and it's nice and smoothly running can't get snagged up on these mouldings anymore uh, which is good news it means no more ruined prints from that and uh, that should um, make my printing more reliable so thanks for watching the video as ever and i'll catch you on the next one